Hey guys, Delta here, and I played quite a few horror games at PAX this year, one of which is The Evil Within, the new game from director Shinji Mikami. I hope I'm saying that right. The legendary director and creator of the Resident Evil series. This game's always interested me from the start, at least the idea of it. In large part, because I've never actually played Resident Evil 4. Blasphemy, I know. However, the early footage of this game, well, I didn't think it looked very good. I I just, I saw so much and it looked choppy and looked like it didn't control and I thought, oh no, this game's gonna bomb, it's just, it's not going to be good. But things have looked better of late, and after waiting an hour and a half in line, I can say that I'm wrong. Now, I'm not saying that The Evil Within is the next coming, no, that's, that's not the point I'm trying to make, but it was definitely creeping me the heck out while I played it, and I think it's a bit of an accomplishment for a game to do that to someone who's been so desensitized by horror over his entire life and recently has had the crap scared out of him by playable teaser, PT, the uh, the teaser for Silent Hills. So uh, that's fresh in my mind of thinking, you know, a game has to live up to that. And for something to maybe not terrify me the way that did or gross me out the way that did, but to keep me on edge and just the tension and, and get my palms sweating and all that, I think that's an accomplishment and I think it's a sign of a good horror game, at least a good start for one. I was actually really pleased by how this demo, I, I specifically say this demo because I don't know about the rest of the game, but the section I played didn't really rely on jump scares at all, at least not predetermined ones. There was one moment in particular that got me pretty good, but that seems like that is a random event that happens throughout the game, uh, possibly by some trigger of the player's behalf, but I don't really know. It definitely didn't seem like a scripted moment, and it wasn't something that was really in your face. It was just something that happened. I thought, oh, holy crap, and I ran, because that was really all I can do in that moment. It's the atmosphere and the sense of dread that was getting my palms sweaty and getting me on edge and freaked out, and I love when a game has that. It's something that I loved about PT, since I've mentioned that already. Sure, it hits you with a couple jump scares early on, but after that, it leaves you alone for the most part, and it just lets you worry and think about what's around that corner to get you freaked out, and that's a fantastic way to do a horror game, in my opinion. Now, the controls are really reminiscent of the recent Resident Evil games, so if you've played any of those, you should feel right at home. That's not surprising at all. But, that means it's the same even down to its faults. The game can feel a little clunky at times, but I can also look for that and accept that in a survival horror game, as long as I don't feel like the controls are actively fighting against me. Shooting definitely felt a little on the slower side at times, but I, like I said, I actually expect this kind of stuff in survival horror. That lack of precision adds to the tension because you don't know whether you can make the shot you need to to survive. If you have really tight shooting controls and know you can rattle off a headshot or nail that bad guy's weak point exactly when you need to, it makes it a little easy and a little less frightening because you're just not worried about screwing up. When you have that potential, that the con that control is being taken out of you in a game, in a video game, which is all about interactivity and control, when you feel a loss of the sensation of having control over what is going on, even when you're still in full control of your character, I'm saying control a lot, uh, but even when you still have full control of your character but feel like you can't impact what is happening or you don't have as much of an impact or as much control over the impact as you'd like, that's terrifying, at least to me. Losing that element of a game is, is definitely uh, something I like. Some players may not, but it's something that I enjoy. Uh, the control scheme was also a little odd. I had to look at my control sheet down on the table in front of me to realize that the inventory is mapped to the right stick by clicking down on the right stick. My friends didn't even realize that that was an option, so who knows if something will change from uh, here to release. It looks like the back button or whatever it was called on, on the new Xbox One controller wasn't used at all. I think that's a more intelligent placement, but we'll see as things go on. Uh, the camera was another thing that was a little odd. I talked about in my Order 1886 video how the camera felt a little claustrophobic, too close to the character at times. I think this may be a result of the aspect ratio because the Evil Within uses something similar and there were times when I felt the camera was in a little too close. Not as much as I did while playing The Order, but it was still something that popped up in my mind a couple of times. However, I think it actually works better in this game because it's a straight horror, while The Order just has elements of horror in it. 
Uh, it adds to that sense of claustrophobia that just works so much better in a game that is focused on delivering a survival horror experience rather than a game that is more focused on being a third-person shooter. Anyways, this game is being developed by Tango Gameworks, directed by the legendary Shinji Mikami, and is being published by Bethesda. It's releasing October 14th in North America on just about any platform you can think of. PS4, Xbox One, PC, PS3, and 360. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more PAX news, and I'll see you next time.